Hello, and welcome to our third episode of Neighborhood Nature. I'm Lisa, and I'm a librarian at St. Albert Public Library. And we have joining us today, Hannah, who is an animal biology student at the U of A and our resident bird and bug expert. In last week's episode, we talked about how ladybugs can come in lots of different colors. They also have different patterns as well. You might have seen the two-spotted ladybug before, like this one here. It's smaller than the seven-spotted ladybug, and it usually has two spots, as the name suggests. What you might not have seen before is this form of the two-spotted ladybug. And as you can see, it's got these two weird stripe markings instead of spots. And it's also got a very ornate black and white pattern on its head. And we found this ladybug in Lisa's hair, actually, when it flew into her hair when we were outside gardening. So if something does fly into your hair, take a look. It might be this really cool ladybug. And in interestingly, this is the same species as the two-spotted ladybug. It's, it's just got a different color pattern on it. If you pick up a ladybug, it often climbs to the highest point on your hand before it flies away, which is what this one is doing here. It opens its wing covers first and then its wings fold out and it flies off. Things that fly need to spend time taking care of their wings, which is what this robin is doing. I'm noticing this robin has speckling on its chest. Is that a baby, Hannah? It's true that young robins have speckles, but they're dark speckles. And you can see this one has just a bit of white speckles, which is just part of the feather. This is what a young robin looks like, and you probably won't see these quite yet, but you might start seeing them soon now that nesting has begun. Another bird you might see around your neighborhood is called a junco, and that's what we're seeing right here. This junco is looking for seeds, and you might see them doing this under your feeder. They like to hop around underneath and pick up bits of seeds that the other birds have dropped. This is another junco that we saw while walking in the rain. He's got his feathers all puffed up and his tail spread, so you can see the two white tail bars. And jucos can come in lots of different colors, but they'll always have those two white tail bars on their tail. So that's one way you can tell that you're looking at a junco. They're not normally that puffy, but in this case it's cold and rainy and so he's got his feathers all puffed out to stay warm. So I can't tell by looking, but is this one a male or a female? With juncos, it's hard to tell. Sometimes if you see a very brown bird, it might be a female. Like this one here, you can see has a lot of brown on the head and back, but there's a lot of variation, so you can't really know for sure. You might see this bird at your feeder and think it's a sparrow, but it's not. It is a pine siskin. Which is actually a type of finch, like a house finch. And they can actually look very, very similar to female house finches. One way you can tell them apart is by the presence of yellow in the wing. You can see there is a little bit of yellow under the white bar there. I really like the sound of these birds. They sound like a zipper. If you're out near water, say the Sturgeon River or Big Lake or anywhere that has a pond or a stream, you might see some ducks. This is a group of male mallards. You can see that one looks a bit sleepy. You can see that he's got his beak tucked into his wing. This Canada goose was hanging out at the same pond as the ducks. A lot of the geese are back already, but you're still probably going to see some migrating over top. And Canada geese can be very loud, like this one is doing right now. When geese are nesting, it's a good idea to keep your distance. They have very powerful wings and they will chase away people who get too close. You can tell they're annoyed when they start to arch their neck and hiss. We're keeping our distance from this one, just in case. This is a Canada goose, but you can also see other types of geese. If you're lucky, you might see a greater white-fronted goose mixed in with a flock of Canada geese, and it will be brown overall and have a little white knob above its beak. The red-winged blackbirds have returned, and here we have a single male at this pond. The males come back before the females and claim a territory, and then when the females come back, they'll choose a territory in which to nest. My favorite place to see a red and blackbird is just outside St. Albert Place, right along the Sturgeon River, and they nest in the weeds there. If you look very closely, you might catch a glimpse of a frog in between the rushes. This one's a wood frog, and we know that because we heard it making noises. Otherwise, it can be hard to identify, especially if they're hiding in the water. And don't forget about Global Big Day by Cornell University. That is happening on May 9th, and that's where you record all the birds that you see in a certain time period. See comment below for more info. Thank you for watching St. Albert Public Library's Neighborhood Nature. Join us next week on Wednesday at 7 p.m. We will talk about more nature and share with you some of our favorite nature apps. Have a great week.